stripping down the CO2 unit. I've sped this video up quite a bit. You can see I've taken the top three screws out of the top there to take that lid off. And that'll allow me to get to the electrics and the other componentry. Get the side screws off. Some of them can be easier to get to than others. You can see here I've got quite a close gap here because of where we've got these little artificial walls. This is inside my training room. Take the bottom cover off there so we can actually take that connection for the actual water side of things. Bottom cover covers the actual water connections, and the top cover is for the electrics. You can actually ease off the cover there altogether. Make sure I don't damage the coil. See, we've been playing about with the fan there on the left hand side. There's a little bit of damage to that coil, which I'm going to straighten up later on. Let me show you how to get to the little heat exchanger at the bottom. There's nothing to maintain that bottom heat exchanger, it's more of a showing you what it all looks like. The next video after this, I'll explain to you how it all works. And those two bottom screws there to remove the fan assembly. I've got one to remove the top there as well. screw you can't get to until you've taken the fan assembly apart. And there's the actual heat exchanger itself we use for condensing work. Using the hot water and heating. How the CO2 unit works, we'll talk about when we're doing heating or hot water. So we've got the refrigerant coming off the top of the compressor. From there, refrigerant's passing from there off to my heat exchanger. As the refrigerant passes through there, it's going to go and transfer the energy from the refrigerant to the water. And if you have a look there, we've actually got the pipe work going in there. That's the water pipe work. And then the refrigerant pipe work is wrapped around the outside of that pipe work and the solders into place to give good thermal transfer and making a very ro robust heat exchanger. As the refrigerant passes through that tube and tube heat exchanger, it's all going from being a gas to being a liquid as we produce that hot water. That refrigerant passes from there off to an expansion device. That's taken from being that high pressure to being low pressure. And that refrigerant goes from there and passes onto that coil. As it passes through that coil, it's going to boil that refrigerant all from being a mix of liquid and vapour all back to being a vapour. That refrigerant passes back from there, from the coil, back into that compressor, and we start all over again. So we're doing a vert test, obviously on the basis that the capacitors have all discharged, so we'll give it a good five minutes. We can disconnect the inverter from the actual com compressor itself. You then put power to the unit. Fan will come into life, so bear that in mind. And then what we do then is we simply test across between those connections on the back of the board. So I've taken the covers off this one, so we then can go to the test points at the top here. So I can then test the outputs that we're going down to the compressor. So there's my W, V, and U. So I can put a multimeter between U and V, V and W and W and U to test those outputs that are supposed to go into the compressor to do that inverter testing. 